What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network here for the next video in our series on how you can use the cypherpunk tools of the PGP and GPG privacy protocols. Uh, and we've already done the setup, a very secure one, actually, and I already showed you a bit how to use it, especially in the command line. Uh, well, today we're going to... Uh, dive in a bit more on how we can get keys and how we can manage them in the graphical user interface of the GNU Privacy Assistant. Uh, so for this, let's jump right into here the screen share. And as you can see here on the left, uh, we are at a, a .onion site for a, a open PGB a key server. And we are looking uh, for the PGP key of Peter Woolley. Uh, and we can look this up either by his name or by his at gmail.com email address. And uh, the cool thing is that uh, we can do it over a key server, right? That would be, let's say, the convenient means. But especially you could, for example, uh, get this key somewhere else, right? On Print it out on a piece of paper or uh, hand it to you on a USB stick or uh, send to you over email. It, it really doesn't matter. You just have to get access to the information. And the way how you get access is not really that important. Of course, always make sure that, that you're using Tor and other services to protect your privacy uh, because, well, why not? <laughs> uh, so when we search for this, we actually see here uh, that there are several different, uh, different keys. Um, here, one was created in 2008 uh, and one in 2014 and one in 2015. Uh, and we see that they are all uh, secure 4096-bit uh, RSA keys. However, we see here uh, that this key has been revoked, uh, which means that Peter Woolley himself has uh, signed a statement that he is no longer actively using this key or that it might have been compromised. Uh, so that is always a bit tricky. And always make sure that uh, you do not use uh, revoked keys as they are no longer secure, right? Uh, they could be compromised here and someone could have stolen them. Uh, so always be careful here uh, with revoked keys. We see that the same is true for the 2014 key. Uh, this one has been revoked, right? Um, so no longer use it. Uh, but we see that here, this 2015 key um, has not been revoked, right? And it is on Peter's uh, Gmail address and we can see his fingerprint right here. Um, so when we here click uh, first on the email address, uh, we can see a bunch of uh, stuff. Now, what is all this? So uh, first, we see the entire fingerprint, right? And the user ID of Peter Woolley. Uh, we see that he has himself signed the validity of this uh, subkey here with his master key. Uh, and we also see, though, that a bunch of other peers uh, have signed uh, Peter's private key as well. And again, what exactly this means and this, how this web of trust works, uh, we're going to get into, uh, into a future video. Um, but we can see that, for example, uh, Gregory Maxwell uh, assures that this is actually Peter's key, or Matt Carolla, or Peter Todd, or Rusty Rossell, or uh, Marco Falke, or Vladimir van der Landers, many, many different people who I personally actually do trust quite a bit, um, have attested that this is actually Peter's key. So I can be rather certain that it actually is, right? It would be really tough uh, for um, for. Peter to fake uh, all these signatures, um, well, it will be pretty much impossible. <laughs> um, so th that is nice. And then when we click here on the key ID, uh, we come up to this entire really, really, really long cipher text. Okay, this is, uh, this is quite long, because this contains uh, all the data that is shown here uh, in uh, in here, right? It contains all the signatures, all the subkeys, and so on, uh, are contained uh, in this ciphertext right here. Now let's make that window a little bit smaller so that it it's actually usable to scroll down. Very nice. Um, so what we can do is we can uh, select all this, right? I'm gonna take a while because it is really long, and make sure that you are that you start above here in in front of the stash and you end below and then simply uh, copy this entire text field and now let's jump right back into the command line first um, and we can do a gpg command with a double dashed flag of uh, or wait, sorry. Um, first, we need to create, uh, we need to save uh, this ciphertext here, this public key uh, locally on our machine. So we're gonna do a little file, just uh, Peter PGP key dot txt. It can be anything, right? Uh, and choose whichever editor you want to use, but this is only a really temporary measure. Um, so don't stress it too much. We're gonna delete the file in just a second. Uh, paste the public key in here. Uh, press Control O to save the file and Control X to leave it. And now, when uh, now we could see it, or 
Uh, now we can add the gpg import command and then specify this text document uh, as the key to be imported, right? And when we press enter now, uh, we see that we have imported a key um, with 59 signatures. Um, and we see that it's a public key uh, of Peter Woolley with this email address. And uh, we have in totally processed one key and we have successfully imported this one key with exactly this key ID. Uh, we, yeah, so uh, pretty good. We are done, right? And now when we uh, type in pgp slash key or dash key, then we see that the last one edited here uh, is the key of Peter Woolley. Uh, so we know that this here is his master key uh, with the certificate and the uh, all the three sub keys are here as well. Uh, so this is awesome. And you can also see that I have a bunch of other keys as well, uh, starting with my own and then uh, all the good Bitcoin peers that uh, really you should uh, be watching and you should have the keys, especially when you use their software. Um, but of course, uh, the command line is not always as intuitive. Uh, and I also do prefer uh, having a graphical user interface every now and then again. And the GNU Privacy Assistant uh, is a phenomenal uh, pre-installed and pre-packaged um, uh, software that comes with every Linux distribution, I believe, at least with a, a GNU uh, distribution. And it basically shows uh, your entire uh, key ring. Um, and now when we refresh, we actually see Peter Woolley's key here as well. So uh, first, we can... Uh, either or well we, we can pretty much do all the command line stuff in here as well but of course the graphical user interface is never as uh, detailed and as uh, precise as the command line is and especially when we want to make a secure setup uh, i do not suggest creating your keys here um, in the uh, in the graphical user interface but it is possible right uh, absolutely um, Okay, uh, then we could also uh, delete keys, right? And uh, we can sign keys. So we can be one of these many peers here uh, that sign Peter Woolley's key. Um, that would be possible, right? Um, we can also set the owner trust. And again, uh, the web of trust we're going to explain much more further. Uh, and also we can import keys, right? That would be here, uh, the file that, um, that we have created, the TXT file um, that we have created. Um, Yes. Okay. And so let's let's get here what what, what this actually is all about. So uh, we can see here the different keys. So uh, if there is a blue key, that is a public key, right? That is the key that we've just downloaded here. And we can't really sign anything with that or decrypt anything, but we can encrypt messages uh, to appear and and then so that only he can read it. And you can see that I have a bunch of different uh, public keys only uh, of bunch of peers uh, that I uh, want to communicate with. However, I also have here a blue and yellow key. Uh, so that is both the public and the private key. And that is, of course, my own key here. Uh, and uh, yeah, we also see when it was created, uh, really important, and if it expires. And because this here is my master key, it does not expire, uh, which is quite nice. And again, uh, owner trust, and we said this as well, we're gonna talk about this much more, and validity. Um, again, owner trust and validity deserve their own videos, but basically because we have generated, or because I have generated this key, it is fully valid. And it shows the name and the email address. And so pretty much uh, the same here for everyone, uh, which, uh, which is quite nice. And you can sort uh, all sorts of things. Um, you can toggle right here uh, the brief key list and the detailed. And as always, I would advance to, to check out the, uh, uh, or I would advise to check out the advanced features always. And um, so for example, if we go into my key, uh, we can see here in the details that there's both uh, private and public parts. And uh, this is a certification, a signing and an encryption key. Um, uh, authentication as well, we'll see that later. Again, we see the username and the uh, fingerprint as well as the key ID, and we see that it does not expire. And uh, all the owner trust and the key type and creation, basically the details here uh, is sh showing uh, this line all over again. Uh, but we can also see uh, signatures if they're there. Uh, so there are a couple uh, IDs uh, that I've uh, deleted because I do not want to dox them uh, that have signed my private key already. Um, and that means then also, right, that uh, you can somewhat trust my private key if you trust these signatures uh, somewhat. Um, so, yeah. Um, 
we also see here the different subkeys that are available. Um, so first, this is uh, one subkey that is, uh, or all of them uh, ha are valid, uh, are RSA keys and are created on the same day. We see that this one expires never, and that is the certificate key. And this is not stored on the UB key. Okay, so I do not have this private key as stored locally. Um, and however, then we see that right here, uh, this is the signing, this is the encryption, and this is the authentication key uh, of all my subkeys, uh, which is quite nice, right? And we also see right here at the T that they are on a smart card. They are on the YubiKey. And here is the card ID uh, of the YubiKey. So I have all of these three keys on the same YubiKey, uh, which is uh, quite nice to have. Uh, and Tofu is not really that, uh, that important. Okay, but the, the same here is true for, for all the other keys, right? So, for example, here, Mario Falco's key. I see uh, that he actually has also one expired key. Uh, uh, so, this one was set to expire, uh, his signing key. And so, he's generated uh, two new ones, uh, actually, uh, one 3072-bit RSA and one 4096. I'm not sure why he created both. Uh, maybe he needed two different signature keys. Um, yeah, but uh, th this is pretty much how we can uh, check out all our uh, peers that we have here in our uh, key ring. And now when we want to, uh, let's say, encrypt something or uh, decrypt something, if we want to use this tool, actually, what we are going to use is right here, open the clipboard. And that's going to pop up a, a new little white black box, a blank box, uh, which we can um, sign and or which we can play with. So this is basically a text field, uh, which we can write stuff in. Uh, so for example, um, your keys, now you know where this is going your Bitcoin, your node, Whoop. your rules. Okay, and same applies, of course, uh, for your informational keys as well. Um, and so we can, now, of course, cut and copy and paste and all that stuff. Uh, but for example, we can sign this buffer text. Right? So when I do that, it's going to ask me uh, with which key I want to sign it. And this would be right here, all right, my key. Uh, so I press OK. And now it's going to wait until I physically touch the UB key. And right here, then, we have the clear signed uh, message. So first, we see the message, right, and that it was hashed with SHA-256. And then we see the signature, uh, which is quite nice. right? And then what we could do is, for example, uh, check the signature of this buffer text, which we've just created, uh, with here the little uh, looking glass. And when we press, press this, we see that, yes, uh, this is actually uh, corresponding to this key ID, uh, which is a valid signature of this user ID and a good signature by Max Hildebrand. Perfect. Uh, so we know that this signature was actually done by my key. And of course, well, we could use other keys as well. Um, okay, we can also encrypt this buffer text. Uh, so this would mean that uh, we use, for example, um, the, let's send this to Nopara because uh, he really needs a room. Oh no, actually, let's send that to Rodolfo. Right? He's he's building uh, own keys, so uh, or, or key key storage solutions as well. Um, and then uh, we are going to encrypt this information so that only he can read it, uh, or well, only he who has his private key can read it. However, we can also toggle on here. Or well, actually, let's do that first. And we, are, we can see that there is a prompt uh, going to come up uh, if we really want to do this. Uh, again, key ID, fingerprint, triple and quadruple check this, uh, if this is actually the person that you want to send it to. If yes, perfect. And we have a ciphertext, right? Cool. And now let's try to decrypt uh, or yeah, um, right here. Let's try to decrypt uh, this buffer text and oh, oh. The uh, library turned an unexpected error. We do not have the secret key uh, to Rudolfo's uh, private uh, public key. No, really? Ah, that's a shame. OK, so unfortunately, we cannot read the ciphertext, uh, which really does suck. <laughs> but let's type it in again. Your keys, your Bitcoin, and your node, your rules. Perfect. And now, so what we could do if uh, we again encrypt this buffer text, or actually let me copy that, that I don't always have to retype this. So again, if we want to send this now uh, uh, to Rudolfo, but we want to prove that this secret message actually is coming from us itself, then what we can do is that we can first sign this message, 
right, as we did earlier, and then encrypt this, this signed message to Rudolfo's uh, public key. And this is basically what this is going to do. So we're going to sign with my key, my private key, and we're going to encrypt it to Rudolfo's public key. And uh, when we do that, it's again going to ask us, are we really want to do this? Yes. And now again, I have to two-factor with the UB key. Um, and now we have the ciphertext. And the signature text is kind of hidden in here. Uh, so from the outside, only seeing this here, uh, I have no clue what is in here. Right? And I have no clue it is, if it is a signed message or not. Uh, I just know it's ciphertext. It could be anything. Right? Uh, so quite nice. Um, then, though, let's encrypt something uh, to my public key. Uh, so right now, uh, we can, uh, again, uh, using the same, and actually, let's sign this as well, uh, so we can see how, how both would look. Uh, and pressing OK, and of course, I need to sign this, again, with the UB key. Uh, and this is going to be the ciphertext message that we get out. And now what we can do is we can end or decrypt here. We can open the little envelope. Uh, and now again, I would have to two-factor touching the UB key. And, and we would see, perfect, uh, it is your key, is your Bitcoin. Um, oh, yeah, actually, little thing that uh, the sign and verification um, does not show here in this, uh, this private, uh, the, the graphical user interface. Uh, so let's do that again, um, both uh, encrypting it to my public key and signing it with my private key. Now, if we do that again, uh, we're going to get the ciphertext. Perfect. We're going to copy that, and we're going to do a little... Uh, little file where we're going to save this. Okay, and then uh, we can GPG uh, and then verify cipher. I'm not exactly sure. Um, okay, uh, so yes, we see um, we see that this was a, a signed by the public key uh, of Max Hillebrand, and it is encrypted data. And uh, enter file name. Okay, and I uh, kind of messed it up here. So, um, uh, what exactly is that? Is it decrypt uh, with the signature with the UB key? Okay, perfect. Uh, so now we have that. Uh, so we see that it was encrypted uh, with the RSA key of my public key. So this is uh, the public key of me. Uh, and this is the message, your Bitcoin, your rules. And we also see it's a signature made here on Wednesday, February um, 2019. And at this, uh, this time, and we see that it was using this key here to sign uh, this text. And we see that it is a good signature uh, for this key right here. Uh, which we ultimately trust. Um, so it's not uh, V for verification, it's a D for decryption, and then it will automatically do the verification. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is uh, basically how you can use the uh, GNU Privacy Assistant graphical user interface. And I think it's really intuitive. Um, I like it for some stuff, but sometimes I do prefer, uh, for example, uh, here, of course, right, the, the sign uh, or the encrypt, uh, decrypt, and uh, verification. Uh, I really uh, want to do this here in, a, uh, in the terminal, as it is much more advanced and nuanced in, in what can be done with this. If you want to switch back, uh, just open back the uh, right here the key, the, uh, uh, key ring editor, and you will be back right here. Um, so yes, you could also, for example, here retrieve keys. Uh, in that way, you could pull uh, uh, the latest version of all these public keys from the public key servers. Uh, although I would always prefer getting those over Tor. Uh, so getting these automatic uh, graphical user, user interface stuff is not always as precise as we would like them to be. OK, uh, I think we covered pretty much everything um, that, uh, or that is important. Um, oh. Back up, yes, that is actually something nice. We can do for the uh, private key part here, um, uh, back up. Um, and then we can uh, back up the actual secret keys here um, to a file uh, and or, or to a repository, whatever it is. So um, I'm not going to do that because it's actually not possible as the UB keys uh, store these private keys. Uh, but if you would uh, uh, generate or if you would store uh, the private keys here on the hard drive itself, uh, this could easily be done. So yes, this looks like pretty much it. I think we covered it. Um, again, download uh, 
or well, yeah, uh, look for these public keys here on uh, Tor key servers, and then check out who else uh, is in the web of trust uh, right here. And if you trust these people or if you know them, uh, and then also uh, yeah, copy this really, really long cipher text and uh, <laughs> into, your, into a text file, and then you can import the key, uh, which is quite nice. Um, maybe a little thing on, on how else you can share uh, your information, your key information. And that is, of course, as we said here, uh, with the public key server, but also something that I, I think is really, really cool uh, is right here. Just a little uh, slip of paper uh, that is uh, right here for me, of course, right? Black on black, because why not? I'm all gray, uh, bl black on gray. And it shows my name, uh, my email address, uh, the type of key, and the creation and expiration date, uh, plus uh, the key. Uh, ID, uh, well, sorry, not the key ID, but the uh, the hash of the key uh, or the fingerprint uh, right here. Uh, so if I give this, this is kind of like a, a cypherpunk's um, business card. <laughs> uh, no, no ICO shilling, uh, just sharing valuable tools that help us defend our privacy. Uh, so this is really, really useful. Uh, and I have a bunch of them, right? You can just print them out. Uh, why not? And uh, the cool thing is that with this, you can easily give that to someone in person. They can actually verify if it is you, right? They can look you in the eyes. Okay, is this actually Max Silverbrand? Is he being uh, forced to give me this key or is he under duress? Or uh, just in general, yeah, having, a, having a good gut feeling. So having these paper slips is extremely useful. And I carry them with me everywhere uh, as business cards, literally. Uh, and especially uh, at Bitcoin events where peers are actually using these tools, right? Because <laughs> unfortunately, not too many people are using GPG and we need to change that. Well, let me rephrase that. Not too many people are using GPG the way they should. Uh, everyone is using encryption uh, in the back end, right, where it's hidden behind graphical user interface and a bunch of security holes, <laughs> but everyone is using it, right? However, now the, the path that I showed you just in the last couple of videos uh, is how you can use GPG properly, uh, both the setup and the use, right, with the YubiKey. Uh, and I would say here, paper slips are definitely a part uh, in how you can use GPG securely. Uh, and again, Web of Trust, a future video uh, that I still have to do a bit more research before I can make it. <laughs> okay, Piers, thank you very much here for joining me again on the World Crypto Network. Uh, for one of the, uh, we're about to finish up actually here on the GPG videos. I think we covered it pretty well so far. Uh, some few parts are still missing, uh, but I hope you're enjoying it so far. I hope that these really application-oriented uh, videos uh, are, are helping you in your path of understanding here and discovering what Bitcoin and, and cypherpunk philosophy is all about. And yeah, GPG, powerful, powerful tool, especially when it's used correctly. So yeah, use it. Uh, why, why wouldn't you? <laughs> Piers, thank you very much for joining and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.